he was just roaming around in the light novel, from what I remember. But yeah, it, it's weird. But yeah, that's why if you saw my reaction, I was like, did this happen in the light novel? Because this is not how I remembered it. He took out a wild boar, which is pretty wild. <laughs> oh, say <she> less! <laughs> Yo, what's up, Tifum Nation? It's me, the Tifum Monster here again. Uh, we're back with another video of Classroom of the Elite. I just did the ED breakdown, even though I have a mental block. Like, I'm not really <laughs> doing well, but I have to create content for Classroom of the Elite. Um, as you saw already in my previous video, I don't have the energy because I just got back home and I'm really exhausted. But I gotta do this video so that by the time I wake up, I'll just have to edit this video and then, yeah, too many things to edit and at the same time, too many things to do with homework. <laughs> anyway, got to do what you got to do with this, uh, you know, YouTube things and, and college things. So, yeah, anyway, uh, why am I doing this again? Uh, I'm just going to bring out my honest feelings, my review for the episode two of season three of Clash with the Elite, because unfortunately, um season three of uh volume eight adaptation has been very rushed super rushed 367 pages completely done in just two episodes of season three <laughs> yeah it sounds ridiculous but it is the fact okay um overall this entire arc is a straight eight out of ten yeah for me it's an eight it's an eight out of ten yeah, or if I were to lower it, 7.5, but for me, it's an 8 out of 10. Okay, so, um, for now, let's, con uh, let's, uh, divide it. All right, episode 2, uh, what's my rating for episode 2 of season 3? It's actually pretty, uh, high. 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> okay, um, they changed a lot. They cut out a lot. They cut out uh, the Nagumo, and the, not the Nagumo. Oh yeah, they yeah they did cut the Nagumo and Kyotaka and Koji card game. I honestly forgot about that part in Volume Eight. That just goes to show you how much I I forgot so much content in Volume Eight. But um, I think I do remember that um, Nagumo sees Ayano Koji as a posing threat to him now. You know, or should I say? Um, he is analyzing that, uh, why is, uh, Manabu, you know, Horikita Senpai, um, eyeing on Ayana Koji so much. That got him curious. And as you saw on the end of, of uh, episode two, uh, the Nagumo and Manabu face off, uh, it was his curiosity that got him to lose his respect from Manabu. So, yeah, Manabu respected Nagumo, even though they are the polar opposite of the way they do things. Um, but he just lost the respect because of his curiosity. And that's what he was doing with Ayana Koji with you know, the card game as well, from what I remember. But, yeah, I just completely forgot about the card game. But, yeah, it just goes to show you that I was so bored in Volume 8. But, um, yeah, keep in mind... That this doesn't mean that um, if it's boring to me, it's boring to everyone. But from what I've seen from the fandom, Volume 8 was the most boring arc of the later half of Year 1 arc of Clash of the Elite. Like, it's uh, one of the most, if not the most, boring arc of Clash of the Elite Year 1. Um, to me, it is the boring arc for Season 3, and I'm glad they rushed it. But do I like that they cut out a lot of content? No. Honestly, no. Obviously, I don't. They cut out the T-Rex scene? Totally fine. It's just fan service. Do I want it to get animated? Obviously, yes. <laughs> when it comes to runtime, episode count, you had to cut it. It's fan service. Let's just set that aside now. Um, what else did they cut? The team formation. Even though it wasn't too crucial, but... You know, still, you can see 
how they formed the team and at the same time in which part of the group is this person you know like Ryuin's group I think he was grouped with Akito you know the one with the Ayana Koji group but um, yeah I can't remember that much but anyway yeah um what else I think they cut out some K and the Ayana Koji moments but um, yeah and then they changed Asahina scene here um, like I said in my PV reaction um they uh they changed it um this is not how they met in volume 7.5 asahina senpai actually you know she lost her charm on her way back to the dorm and ayana koji just simply saw that she just accidentally dropped the charm you know and then he returned it anonymously to her dorm and then asahina you know, got it back. In volume 8, from what I remember, Ayana Koji did say to K that watch over Asahina as well. And that is why, you know, that's how Ayana Koji was able to get into contact with uh, Asahina. Is that uh, she spied on Asahina. K spied on Asahina. And, or that's when Ayana Koji made this move. When she went to the bathroom or restroom. And then Ayana Koji just simply... Uh, went to the ba uh, the restroom or, you know, for them to meet coincidentally. And then uh, he looked at the charm and then he just said uh, the charm uh, looked familiar. And then Asahina realized that it was him that returned the charm. So, yeah, um, in in the anime, the way they did it is just, you know, Wow, Ayana Koji just simply saw the charm dropped. And then it just so happens that he needed to return it to gain information. Do I like the change? It's alright. <laughs> because if you think about it, um in the light novel, it seems as though it seems as though Ayana Koji made this move since the beginning. <laughs> but in the anime it's too coincidental. You know, it, I mean, they had to cram it, but, you know, anyway. It is what it is, though. I mean, I'm just glad that um, I got to hear Asahina Senpai's voice. It's um, Sora Mamiya, one of my favorite series as well. And, uh, yeah. So, at least we got this interaction. And at the same time, you know, they, they kind of did it justice, but the way they meet up is not really the strongest feat of this particular scene they executed that pretty decently and then um what else this scene also koenji scene and the anakoji talk um i don't know if they cut out some content here but yeah this is not how i remembered it i remember anakoji actually following koenji and you know until he stopped him you know with a strong grip and then that's where koenji realized or noticed that yeah it is him uh the one dragon boy ryuin was looking for and uh yeah he is the ex <laughs> the mastermind yeah he wasn't doing this he was just roaming around in the light novel from what i remember but yeah it, it's weird but yeah, that's why if you saw my reaction, I was like, did this happen in the light novel? Because this is not how I remembered it. He took out a wild boar, which is pretty wild. <laughs> oh, say less! <laughs> they, uh, they got to have a feast because of Koenji. Yeah, look at that. What kind of meat is this? Yeah, I know, right? Unexpected delivery of boar meat. Yeah, thanks to Koenji. <laughs> I don't know if this really happened in the light novel. If it is, then that just means they had to do it. They had to let us anime fans you know or us viewers see that koenji was the one who took out the wild boar and delivered it here <laughs> i don't know <laughs> anyway i'm glad they didn't delete this scene or cut out this scene because this is way too important especially the bond between the bros you know um i'm glad about this and uh yeah um there's nothing here to discuss decent here in there and then this one uh, it's a brief moment but i mean you know it's the the exchange of k and anakoji 
And yeah, because Ayano Koji did say uh, that he, she uh, K should look out for Tachibana. Uh, she should spy on Tachibana, and uh, yeah, she gave out Tachibana's location on that piece of paper, and that's why they exchanged glares. And uh, yeah, there you go, pretty decent. But I think uh, there, uh, I don't know, man. There's more to that scene, I guess, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, in Volume 8, there's not much Anokoji and K moment, but uh, this scene is pretty decent. Yeah, and also the lighting, like I said, oh my god, the lighting here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at, look at this. Like, just wow. <laughs> so, yeah, and then this scene... I remember this scene. Uh, we we can actually read the dialogues in the light novel, but the only thing I remember from this scene is um, Hashimoto talked to Ryu and, and asked why he stepped down as a leader of their class. The tyrant stepped down, like it was so rare and random. Like why would he step down? Oh, they talked about Koenji. Yeah, they talked about things. But in the anime, it uh it let us saw uh I mean, it let us see that it's in Ayana Koji's perspective, so he can't actually hear it. You know, because he's too far away. So Nagumo and Manabu did show up, alright. But in this in the light novel, was this Ayana Koji's POV? Yeah, it it is Ayana Koji's POV, so I don't know why the sudden change, but Anyway, yeah, and they also didn't adapt this, the Suzune part and the Ichinose part, like I said, on where they were supposed to start. Yeah, they didn't adapt those, <laughs> sad to say, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, here, yeah, they didn't adapt this as well, so yeah, and they didn't adapt this. Okay, 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 so... The way they cut out this part of Koenji when he said, uh, let's work up a light sweat, shall we? You know, in the anime as well. Okay, let's just fast forward this. So they animated this well. Um, here we go. In the scene. Um, well then. Perhaps I'll work up a bit of a sweat. <laughs> yeah, that's how the Crunchyroll version uh, translated. But yeah. Uh, yeah, basically it was cut off here in the light novel as well. So, yeah, that's why I was, uh, and they off screen it <laughs> because they did. And, um, yeah, it wasn't, you know, it's just like in the sports festival in volume five and episode six of season two. So, yeah, um, it was just cut off like that. So, yeah, um, in the light novel, it says Koji. Uh, finished in second place. He wasn't going at full speed, but he still finished and managed to go in second place. Yeah. You know? And, uh, yeah. And then they adapted this well. After that, they adapted this well. Like, these scenes here. Yeah. And the lighting as well. Once again, it was so movie quality. Yeah. These scenes... Have been pretty good. Yeah, Tachibana crying. Look at look at how expressive Tachibana is in the light novel. Yeah, the illustration. And also from what I remember, right? Um well, we'll get into that. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think there's a cut content or probably something, but I'm not gonna go into detail on that one on what cut content here, but so far it's a good adaptation here in the scene pretty good and then this one okay let's talk about this scene there i think i remember this being cut out the dialogue here i don't know if i'm really misremembering it but i'm not gonna read the whole thing but yeah he mentioned to ayana koji that he is uh after this he uh he might break up with hirata yeah basically that's the only cut content but anyway yeah overall though it's like i said an 8.5 out of 10 episode especially the animation quality here Look at K looking gorgeous. And this scene. Oh my god. Look at that freaking shot of Ayana Koji. It's so cinematic. I love it so much. <laughs> it 
anyway yeah like i said pretty pretty good episode like i said a lot of cut content however as i stated already many times this is one of the most boring arcs i've read it took me long enough to finish it but we're moving on to volume 9 this is much shorter than volume 8 okay look at that comparing it to volume 8 by the way hey. look look at look at the difference see look at the difference look at that see um this has 367 pages and how much uh, how many pages does this have let's see shall we 331 <laughs> yeah so this is much shorter of a volume so expect it to be two episodes and once again all right <laughs> i'm not having high hopes for this volume to get adapted well because what i want is peak adaptations of volume 10 okay volume my favorite volume of year one volume 11 and volume 11.5 because this will set up year two and uh yeah new relationships will be formed in 11.5 so yeah um in volume nine it was a good read at first for me it was decent however at the recent events of year two i don't know if i should be happy or not <laughs> because it was a wasted character development disappointed <laughs> yeah i'm pissed after this volume ichinose was in my top three literally she was in my top three because ayana koji proved sakayanagi wrong remember in episode one in season three spoiler alert okay so light novel territory once again click away if you don't want to get spoiled in episode three four so yeah um and also if you don't want to get spoiled in year two all right so remember episode one in season three um sakayanagi or arisu did say that everyone has uh a light and dark side or both uh or has two sides so if you account that now if you uh if you analyze that dialogue from sakayanagi to now and if you're a light novel reader and you know what happened in year two then you'll know that she is right Ayana Koji is wrong because in volume 9, she, I mean, Ayana Koji proved Sakainagi wrong. And at that moment, Sakainagi was wrong. That's why she lost to Ayana Koji. So, yeah, because Sakainagi was bringing Ichinose down. Like, she's spreading rumors of her shoplifting, doing some uh, horrible crime back in the day, and she cannot be trusted, etc., etc. So, yeah, and then Ichinose shared her backstory. When I read her backstory, she's uh, clearly just a good person. She's just a good person in general. I treated her as a saint. I treated her as this angel like Hiori, like Sheena. But after recent events of year two, she's not. Clearly... You've seen her differently this time compared to what we initially thought of Ichinose. Ichinose was a pure good person, but this time, manipulation and everything in year two, Ichinose is a freaking yandere. Like, she's. She cannot be trusted. She's wild. <laughs> she's doing everything she can just to get rid of K by the way and at the same time just to get ayana koji like she is obsessed of ayana koji and i don't like that development people like that development of ichinose because ichinose was lacking development in the uh in the light novel and so does k to be completely honest so does k even though i'm a k simp i'm i'm being very objective here k doesn't have a lot of development throughout year two compared to year one for Ichinose it's a great character development or more like a twisted character development so yeah it's weird because after volume nine of year one I was I was so sure that Ichinose was just purely a good person but I was proven wrong once again by a classroom of the elite that's why uh, when I get my hands on volume 8 of year 2, volume 9, year 2, and year 2, and volume 9.5, and year 2, volume 10 in English, 
I will read volume 5 here too and above after that, okay? The volumes of year 2 have been, to me, not interesting at all. Uh, some have been very ridiculous lately. Um, but comparing it to year 1, year 1 was more immersive to me. It was way better. So, yeah, even though I got bored in Volume 8, still, though, it was a pretty good setup for what's going to happen in Volume 9, 10, 11, and 11.5, the aftermath, and what's going to happen in Year 2, especially Year 2, Volume 1. Oh, my God, that was so peak. Year 2, Volume 4. Oh, my God, that was so peak. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, like I said, um, Volume 8... I was okay with the rushed pacing, especially when Kadokawa provided 13 episodes for this anime for this season of Clash of the Elite. Of course, Studio Lurch had no choice but to cut out a lot of content and just read the light novels if you want, you know. But as anime only, objectively speaking, the pacing is well made. It's well done. It's well thought out. And the animation, art style, visuals, the quality of the episodes have been so much better than season two okay but is it better than season one that's up for a debate <laughs> we'll see at the end of season three if it's much better than season one okay i will uh i will have my critique so it will not include blu-ray will only critique uh what they aired in on tv or on uh on main on streaming websites uh we'll see what they'll do with the uh, volume 9 but like i said uh i'm totally fine if they rush it again two episodes and then just do three episodes for volume 10 and then probably four episodes in volume 11 and two episodes in volume 11.5 because knowing what they'll do in the point five of the series they'll probably just cram it you know so most probably they will do three episodes in volume 10, four episodes in volume 11, and three, I mean, two episodes in 11.5. So, um, yeah. But I'm also afraid of people have been saying that what if they adapted volume zero in season three? Oh, hell no. <laughs> if they do that, I'm going to be so mad. Okay. I'm not joking. I'm going to be so mad if they do that. So, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, because Volume Zero deserves a better adaptation, okay? It's a backstory for Ayano Koji and Sakayanagi, but mainly Ayano Koji. Or mainly Atsuomi, Ayano Koji's father. <gasps> Spoiler alert. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's his name. Like I said, Volume 8, decent adaptation. Is it the best? No. Was it good? Eh, I, mm, that depends. Was it an okay adaptation? Was it an, a decent, an alright adaptation? Yes. Um, was it the worst adaptation of all time? No. <laughs> What's the worst adaptation? Volume 7.5. <laughs> I still see people complaining about the anime, and I'm just really tired of seeing it. You know, like they say, they keep slandering the anime and say, Oh my god, Studio Lurch butchered this anime, yeah, yada, yada, yada. And, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting tired of it, honestly. If you think about it, it's just too much dialogue, too much monologues. So, here's the thing. In anime, you can see visually, alright? And you can hear the sounds. You can hear what they sound like. But in the light novel, you just have to read. And that's the power. That's the strength of Classroom of the Elite. You get immersed because of, you know, you can read the, the, the inner thoughts, the monologues, and... The way they describe things, it's much more complex. It's much better and, well, uh, better paced than the anime. Because in the anime, it's it feels rushed, but it's actually not. So, yeah, it's two different kinds of media. So, if you adapt the anime, you know, if you adapt the light novel into an anime, you'll, you know, especially... For a classroom of the elite, it's more of inner thoughts, you know, the way the main character thinks. You can't portray it so well because in the light novel, it's how Ayana Koji sees it. It's how he perceives things, his POV. That's why you get immersed. Unlike in the anime, it's just showing visuals, you know, and the way 
they uh they adapted animated so yeah there's a difference there that people actually cannot appreciate and at the same time cannot understand that there's just things that they cannot adapt because it's inner thoughts <laughs> it's it's the monologues that can only be seen and read in the light novel that's why if you want to know more about the words and the, the the inner thoughts just read the light novel but if you're satisfied with the anime then that's good enough all right that doesn't mean that you have to read the light novel but what i'm trying to say here is that it's two different kinds of media so yeah the way you enjoy the anime doesn't matter okay it's okay to enjoy the anime you know, why would you hate on other people enjoying the anime? It's weird, man. I'm a light novel reader, but I'm actually defending the anime. <gasps> it's weird. Anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm being very objective here, okay? At the same time, by the way, I'm going to share this right now. It would be a dream for me. I, I know it's impossible. Most likely, very impossible for me to meet the author and interview him. You know, interview Kinogasa sensei and Tomasa sensei Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, um, if I get the chance and, you know, yeah, I'm pretty sure that won't happen, though. But some, you know, dream big, you know, <laughs> people say it, dream big, you know, there's nothing to lose. <laughs> anyway, yeah, like I said, uh, it would be a dream come true, though, if we get to have a chance to meet the author and interview him about the anime, the light novel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we will get the answers we need. Because we don't know what the author looks like. Because he's a mystery. <laughs> he's like Ayana Koji. <laughs> In the shadows. Anyway. Yeah. Um, that is it for now though. Um, like I said. Uh, I just liked the pacing better. In the anime. Comparing it to the light novel. But I'm just sad that they cut out. Uh, lots of scenes. The, also. The Koenji and Nagumo. Uh, you know face off not really face off but their talk and yeah that's how nagamo sees koenji as a threat and uh he's worried of uh koenji at that moment and uh yeah i'm not okay with that being cut out they should have kept that and they should have kept probably the card game of nagamo and anakoji but overall i think that would be the only crucial moments in this volume that sh shouldn't have been cut out so but overall though i'm satisfied with the pacing in the anime because i was just super bored in volume 8 and i'm glad that we're moving on to volume 9 because volume 9 was decent to me but to some people it's quite boring to them to me it was decent but like i said after recent events in volume uh, i mean year two it's it's wasted so yeah anyway that is it for now though um volume 10 peak volume 11 peak 11.5 peak so hopefully for a peak adaptation in those volumes but anyway thank you guys so much for watching that's all for this video i hope you'll uh understand what i feel for this episode it doesn't mean that you know you have to bash the anime bash the light novel readers can't we just enjoy what we enjoy you know like as a light novel reader or no not as a light novel reader as a fan of classroom of the elite i enjoy these two different kinds of media i enjoy reading the books and i enjoyed watching the animes sometimes i'm i'm disappointed i am not satisfied with the adaptation at times remember in volume 5's adaptation i was so disappointed that they cut out most of the games and yeah it was pretty bad to me so that's how I see it, you know. You can change my opinion on that one. Volume 5 was a massive letdown for me. They did it well with the running scene and some other moments in Volume 5's adaptation. But still, though, the episode 5 of Season 2 was pretty mid to me. It was so bad. But anyway, like I said, I love the anime. I love the light novel. But at the same time, if I'm unsatisfied, if I'm dissatisfied with things... I'll just say it, you know. That's why I told you guys in this episode, in this particular volume adaptation, by the way, that I am a bit of a... I'm let down by the fact that they cut out some important scenes, but 
not most of the important scenes though they only cut out minimum of the important scenes but still they are crucial moments of the volume but still i hope they do something to compensate with that or or cut out scene so yeah anyway thank you guys so much for watching i will catch you guys on the next one which will probably be the preview reaction i don't know which one will be the first to upload will it be the preview reaction for episode three of season three or will it be this video but we'll see anyway thank you guys so much for watching peace out